And there are some people that resist change at every juncture. And it doesn't matter what you would try to implement. We're not going to do that. That's not how we're used to doing it. We're not going to do that. That doesn't suit my fancy. We're not going to do that. So you, you're in a, in a crosshairs of dealing with multiple personalities, multiple cultures, all types of diversity on all types of levels, from ethnicity, religion, uh, you know, where were you born, and what did you learn there? So this is, this is the base of what, what we're dealing with. Does that have anything to do with governance, per se? Not really, because the governance part of this is to set the infrastructure for people to live without encroaching on how they live. But now we're at the intersection where how you live brings danger to other people. Now we have the police to inv invoke the law, and then we have the governance side to tweak the ordinances. I didn't really come prepared to, to speak on the Better Landlord Program, particularly this month or to make some type of systematic um, dissection of the value on one side or the other, but I can tell you that behind the scenes in dealing with a lot of landlord-tenant issues one-on-one, -on -one, that sometimes both sides of the equation are presenting with breaches that cannot be touched, particularly through the codes department or the police department or the governance. And I'll give you one short example, and this has to do with heat. So now we're in the heating season. Uh, last spring, I was approached by some individuals who had a problem over four years worth of winters. So I was out of office four years, so I guess they waited for me to come back to ask this question. But they didn't have heating oil, working furnace for four years. But the landlord brought in space heaters. As a consequence, their bill went up absorbently high. They couldn't afford to pay it, blah, blah. You know, the rest of the story is that they were evicted. But I, I asked the question about the, the heater. Could the, was the heater a part of the inspection, and how could the heater not run for four years and that not be a reportable problem? Hands off, I can't control what people report, but when it gets to me, I'm gonna ask the questions. So what came back was that the heating and ventilation and air conditioning stuff falls under a different type of jurisdiction with the state than with the codes department, which creates a loophole. It creates a loophole where nobody's really responsible. So by bringing the space heaters in, I guess the landlord's saying to the tenant, you have heat. By not fitting, fixing the heater, it's saying to us, what? Nothing, because we're not in charge of inspecting the heater. You see, you see what I'm saying? There's a loophole there. So you want people on both sides of the equation to be equitable. You want the landlord to be fair to the tenant. You want the tenant to be fair to the landlord. But do, and we do know life is not always fair. And there are some hard case situations out there. And the growing incidence of drug activity is a hard case. And can I tell you today that um, I have the solution personally to make all that better when nationwide nobody has the solution? If you know somebody that has a problem with addiction, I would say that's the closest arm of outreach. That's the closest arm. If you know someone whose house was broken into, I mean, I don't, I don't know these scenarios that you, that you brought up today, but I'll, I'll go back and check it out. And you know, if someone's roaming around in someone's house, it must be a police report, right? Yes. Okay. So we'll, we'll check it out. Okay, I heard you say six. Um, I want to also go back and just do a little historical recap and, and thank those who volunteered from the Hill School for the Pottstown Cares Day and the Pottstown Borough, as well as students from the Pottstown High School. And I can remember during the first term setting the seed for uh, this type of day through the Mayor's Initiative on Neighborhoods, where we we actually did do a lot of street cleaning and detailing, and I was also able to secure help from uh, individuals who were on work release for the county on several different weekends. And I supervised.
supervise those individuals myself on Saturdays and Sundays for six hours over six weeks uh, period during the summer. So thanks to the Hill School and Pottstown Cares for taking it to the next dimension and also that it serves as a springboard for residents to do the same thing all the time. It's not like a, a luxury service where somebody comes and cleans the streets. And I think that's one of the perceptions that's out there based on some of the calls I got for half of my street was done, the other half wasn't done. Wasn't that an impetus for you to do the other half if somebody did one half for you? That was my comment. Um, 